Hello, I'm Corey Phillip from Advanced Racing Suspension. Today I'm going to talk about the fifth coil assembly, uh, primarily the PD fifth coil assembly that we build for the dirt lake models. At first we'll talk about the basics of the fifth coil and what determines the, the rate of the fifth coil spring. One of the big factors is the distance between the fifth coil and the rear axle. You know, on your torque arm, uh, generally in a uh, dirt lay model, it's going to be between 32 and 36 inches is where your fifth coil is going to be. The further forward it is, the lighter the spring it takes, the further back it is, the stiffer spring it takes on a fifth coil. Another factor is, is a tire compound. If you're running a, a soft tire versus a harder tire, uh, you know, the softer tire will re require a stiffer spring because you're going to have more weight transfer versus a spec tire with a hard compound that lacks a lot of traction. Also, how much traction is created by the rear suspension? It's a situation where if you've got uh, a rear suspension that's something's going on and topping out or, or you've got some binds, you're not gonna have as much traction versus you know, a rear suspension that's put together and is working properly. One of the biggest factors in a fifth coil is getting the proper amount of travel. And we target to have right around three and a half inches of travel on a dry slick to racetrack. And that's what most cars are designed for. You know, if you don't have enough travel, you're not getting the car up and it's not transferring weight. It's not getting the left rear suspension up and it's not getting the, the arm angles in the right direction. So travel is, is, is a must in fifth coil. What, you know, what happens is when you have too much travel, uh, usually you're giving up corner exit speed. It means that you know, you, you've got a, a soft spring in there and all of a sudden you're, you know, you're traveling ex excess amount you know, on a dry set racetrack while well, the car's lazy off the corner. It's a combination where you want to be as stiff off the corner to give you instant traction, but then you don't want to be so stiff midway down the straightaway that you break traction. So that's, you know, that, that's always a compromise on a fifth coil. You know, that's the uh, benefit of the, of the PD fifth coil assembly. It gives you a stiff initial rate, but then it gets softer as it goes down the straightaway. And another factor is, you know, torque versus horsepower. Uh, a super late model is gonna have more horsepower and more torque is gonna move the fifth coil more and create a uh, need for a stiffer spring versus a crate motor that doesn't have the horsepower of the torque. And so you're gonna have to soften the fifth coil package to accommodate that size motor. What happens on a lot of high horsepower motors is as you drive off the corner, you've got good torque and it moves the fifth coil up. But as the torque drops off and the horsepower increases, you got a spot where they cross over and then the car breaks traction from the, uh, the dropping off the torque and the raising the horsepower. From the chart on the screen, you can see the difference between a standard fifth coil versus a PD fifth coil. We're gonna start at 18 and a half inches of ride height or whatever your ride height is of your race car, but this is just a good example. We've got 150 pounds of preload at ride height. So we're starting with that number to be 150 and then after one inch of travel, it goes to 500. Second inch of travel, it's 850. Third inch of travel is 1200. And three and a half inch of travel is 1375. And that's just with the, with the 350 spring adding together. So, but the problem is, is most dry sick racetracks can't stand 1375 pounds of, of spring rate. And what happens is the rear tires break loose. Where on the other example, we're showing the PD fifth coil, the, the same preload at ride height. So the first inch of travel, you have exactly the, the same spring rate. It's still 500 pounds. But then as you see on the chart, you know, the second inch, it, you know, drops off to 738. Third inch of travel drops off to 903. And the three and a half inch now is 993. So basically the difference between 382 pounds. So it's, it's a lot more realistic that you're gonna achieve that three and a half inches with a PD fifth coil and, and get your travel, get your 
get your uh, suspension up, get your weight transfer, and and create more traction off the corner and all the way down the straightaway. We're going to show you how the PD fifth coil works. We're using this uh, spring smasher to show you the the function of the of the PD fifth coil. So what we're going to do is we're going to run it through a three and a half inch travel range. So we'll start off at ride height. And then we'll run this machine. You see, as the first inch of travel, just moving this spring right here. And then after one and a half inches of travel, it gets into the second spring. So then you've got both springs working together. So this gives you the stiff first inch of travel for quarter traction off, uh, off the corner, but then keeps the car hooked up all the way down the straightaway. The two graphs that we've plotted on the machine here are showing the first one is a straight 350 spring through three and a half inches of travel. And the second one is the PD fifth coil with a 350 spring for the first inch of travel. And then after an inch and a half of travel, it gets into the second spring and it softens as, as it travels on the compression, showing you, you know, the initial traction of the 350 spring and then the traction that we can create by a softer three and a half inch number and keep, keep uh, traction in the, in the car all the, all the way down the straightaway. When you check and travel of the PD fifth coil, you want to do it on a spring load machine. The reason is you're only seeing the travel of the bottom spring. As, as the, the unit compresses, it'll compress and, and move the mood indicator, but it only moves showing this spring here, doesn't show the total travel. And so if you put it on a load machine and push the shock and spring unit up till it just touches the bottom cup, and at that point you can look and see how much your total travel is of the fifth coil. Weak beat maintenance on the fifth coil is done by taking and cleaning the fifth coil and getting all the dirt and debris off and then what we use is we use a, a dry graphite spray, uh, something you can buy from Amazon or you can buy at Napa. It's a dry graphite and we'll take and we'll spray, you know, the sliders and we'll spray inside the uh, fifth coil and then we'll even spray the shaft. Just make sure that everything operates freely and there's no binds in the uh, fifth coil assembly. The shock valving of the fifth coil, it takes a shock that has significantly more rebound than compression. You know, what we'll do is we'll have a, a shock that has enough low speed rebound in it to keep traction on both slick and patchy conditions. And this keeps traction all the way off the corner and through th down the straightaway. Now, sometimes we'll take and back some rebound out of the fifth coil shock to keep the car free on corner entry on, on heavy hammer down situations where you need to free the car up. But then as it starts slicking off, you better put that rebound back in the fifth goal and it keeps traction. If you have any questions on the PD fifth goal, feel free to uh, give us a call or email us at any time. Thank you.